This lesson is about special angle relationships. We're going to learn some new vocabulary words, and then we're going to apply them in some pictures to practice. So first, the vocabulary we have is complementary angles. Complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90. So don't say two angles that equal 90, because you might be tempted to make each angle equal to 90, but know that together they add up to 90. So I think angle plus angle equals 90. And what those might look like, they might look something like this, where together, notice there's the box for perpendicular, together they add up to 90, or they could be separate from each other, and maybe this one's 40 and this one's 50, and together they add up to 90. The next type of angle are supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 180. Again, don't say two angles that equal 180. Be sure you're specific that they add up to 180. And these could look like this, where we have them next to each other. They're connected. They're adjacent. And they make a line. Okay, so that adds up to 180. Or they could be totally separate from each other. We could have one angle that's 100 and then an angle over here that's 80. And because those add up to 180, they are supplementary. The next term we have is adjacent angles. When I think of adjacent angles, I think they're next door neighbors. They're connected. Um, adjacent angles, by definition, share a common vertex and a common side. So adjacent angles would look like this. So notice here's the common vertex, here's the common side. These would be adjacent angles. If you look above, you'd see those two angles are adjacent because they share that common side as well as these two, they share that common side. So they're next door neighbors, they have a fence in common. Vertical angles, I'll give you the official definition and I'll show you a picture. Vertical angles are non-adjacent, so they are not next to each other. Non-adjacent angles formed by intersecting lines. So when you think of vertical angles, I'm going to think of an X. So I'll number these 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can notice that 1 and 2 are adjacent. 1 and 3 are not adjacent. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. The same is true for angle 2 and angle 4. They are not adjacent. So 3 and 4 are adjacent. 1 and 2 are adjacent, so we, we picked the non-adjacent angles. They're across from each other when we make this X with our intersecting lines. The next definition we have is a linear pair. Linear pair is exactly what it sounds like. It's a pair. It's two angles. They are adjacent, and they make a line. I think there's an official definition that says um, their, their sides form opposite rays, but we're just going to say they make a line. So here we go. Angle 1 and angle 2 would be considered a linear pair. They're adjacent, they have that common side, and they make a line. Those are called a linear pair. Notice that this linear pair and these supplementary angles look exactly the same. And there's a reason for that that we're about to find out on the next page. We have something called the vertical angle theorem. The vertical angle theorem is pretty simple. It just says vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles, I'll just use the symbol, are congruent. 
Now later on you're going to use this in proofs and other justifications and some people just call it VAT. For vertical angles are congruent, it's the vertical angle theorem. And I will let you get away with that. The linear pair postulate we kind of talked about, it just says that linear pairs are supplementary. Oops, I've got a pen that's dying. Linear pairs are supplementary. So if two angles form a linear pair, they're always going to add up to 180. So remember that picture. They made a straight line. These two angles are always going to add up to 180 because they're a linear pair. All right, let's practice that with some pictures. The complement of an angle is twice the measure of the angle. Find the measure of each angle. As soon as I hear that angles are complementary of each other, the first thing I'm going to do is write blank plus blank equals 90. There's two angles involved. It says one angle is twice the measure of the other. So I'm going to call one of them x and the other one 2x. And then we'll solve our equation and find out that one of the angles was 30 and the other angle was 60. We have a similar question about supplementary angles. The supplement of an angle is 20 degrees less than the angle. So as soon as I saw that my angles were supplementary, I go blank plus blank equals 180 because they add up to 180. It says one angle is 20 degrees less than the other. So if I call one of them x, the other one is 20 degrees less than x, so I'll make it x minus 20. And then I'll solve. I get 2x equals 200, x is 100, and of course the other angle, x minus 20, is equal to 80. And that confirms that they really did add up to 180. Alright, next up. Solve for x. So in this picture, I want you to notice this box. That box means that those two rays are perpendicular, which makes that a right angle, and we know that right angles are equal to 90 degrees. So I'm going to say x minus 14 plus 2x plus 20 equals 90. There's angle addition. The little angle plus the little angle equals the whole thing. So we solve our equation. I get 3x plus 6 equals 90 subtract the 6 from both sides, and I'm going to do 84 divided by 3. Get 28. X equals 28. And that's all we had to do. They didn't ask us to go back and find the measures of the angles. Of course we could, just to double check and make sure it really worked. Number 4. Solve for X. Well, what do you notice about these two angles? They are adjacent, and you see that they make a straight line. That makes them a linear pair. And remember, we had a rule that said if the angles make a linear pair, they are supplementary. They add up to 180. So here goes. 3x plus 10 plus x minus 30 equals 180. So that is 4x minus 20 equals 180. Add 20. I believe we're going to get x equals 50. One more thing to mention about this. This straight line is sometimes called a straight angle. If we were to use these three, three points and name this as an angle, it's called a straight angle. We have an obtuse angle. We have an acute angle, and an angle that forms a straight line is called a straight angle. It's kind of an obscure term, but it's used occasionally. Number five, the measures of two complementary angles are in a ratio of three to seven. So I know they're complementary, so I'm going to start with angle plus angle equals 90. Now I've got to figure out what to do with the three and the seven. This is actually very simple to do. What we're going to do is we know that the first angle 
it has the 3, so I'm going to call the first angle 3x. I'm going to call the second angle 7x. And once we solve for x, we can find the actual measure of the two angles. So I'm going to find out that x is 9. And since they asked me to find the measure of the larger angle, I plug my 9 in, the smaller angle is 27, and the bigger angle is 63. And you can confirm that those really do add up to 90. So whenever you're given a ratio, you slap an X on them, and they add up to whatever that total is. All right, number six has a lot going on here. Find the values of X and Y that make AB the bisector of CED. Okay, here's angle CED. And I want AB to be the bisector of that angle. And I also want AB to be the bisector of angle FEG. So I've got two things to solve. Remember what a bisector does? It cuts it into two equal parts. So if AB is a bisector, this angle is equal to this angle. So I'm going to write 2x plus 30 equals 30 minus y. Notice this equation has an x and a y, so I can't solve it with just this equation. I'm going to have to find another equation to use, and then it's going to be a system that I'll solve. FEG, if this is a bisector, these two angles are equal to each other. So I get 3x minus 2 equals y plus 39 another equation with an x and a y. So I'm going to get these ready to write a system of equations and solve. So this one is 2x plus 60 equals 30 minus y. And if I move everything over to get it into a good format, I'm going to add y to both sides. I'll subtract the 60. Over here I get 3x minus 6 equals y plus 39. I will subtract the y from both sides, add the 6, and there I have my two equations that I'm going to put into a system. Now, if I just add these two equations together, I'm going to run out of room, but this isn't going to take long. To notice it's plus y and minus y already. So elimination is going to be a simple process. I get 5x equals 15. x is 3. And now I go back to any one of these equations and plug in x equals 3. So this one says x is 3. I'm going to do 2 times 3 plus 30. This angle is 66. And I can come down here and find out Remember, these are equal. This angle also has to be 66. So what would y have to be to make 30 minus y equal 66? Well, let's see. If I subtract 30 from both sides, 66 minus 30 should be 36. y equals negative 36. Now let's check the other two angles. If I put a 3 in here, 3 times 3 minus 2, well, this angle becomes 3. And this angle, if I put in negative 36 plus 39, I also get 3. So I've solved my system correctly because my answers worked. Remember, a bisector is going to make two congruent angles. So there's my solution for x and y. Find angle C, E, D. The measure of angle CED was 66 plus 66, so it was 132. And the measure of angle FEG was 6. Now don't judge by scale because when I draw these pictures, they're not always drawn to scale. You go by the numbers. But sometimes you're going to have a system, and that's how you get started with those.